presence is there when you, whenever the name of Jesus, the presence of God comes. Amen. Because worship is about is about what comes out of your heart. Amen. And so when you spend time, you know, there's been times I've spent time in the Word of God, and I've become so overcome by the presence of God, it was just uh, it, it was just mind blowing. And they're saying, get back up there, preacher. We can't see you on the other one. So I'll have to try to behave tonight. <laughs> Amen. But how many is, how, how y'all doing this week? Blessed and highly favored. Blessed and highly favored. Amen. How many know Jesus loves you? Yes. How many know he's got good plans for you? Yes. Not to harm you. Amen. How many have made up your mind? That you're going to follow Jesus. Right. Amen. How many have made up your mind you're going to get what the Word of God says? Yes. They're going to stand on His promises. Amen. Amen. How many have decided? Amen. If you've decided, let your face know. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to say it. If you've decided, let your face know. See, because that means you've got hope. It means you're calmly anticipating the Word of God to come to pass. Amen. Amen. Romans 15, 13 says, The God of hope will you fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. He's not the God that I'm hoping does what He says He'll do. He is the God of hope. It's not just some wishy-washy thing. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's not just some wishy-washy thing. Come on now. He's the God of hope. He means I, he, will, he will do what He says He will do. We can confidently anticipate God to do what He said He would do. Come on. And so, He's the God of hope. He wants to fill you with joy and peace. Have you ever seen anybody filled with joy and peace that walked around going... <laughs> I mean, they look like they just sucked on a five-pound bag of persimmons. I mean, you know, they tried the lemonade and forgot the sugar. <laughs> How many know whenever you have hope, you have joy and peace? You do have an enemy of your soul that's trying to steal your joy and peace. But if you'll make up your mind to believe the Word of God, now listen, I didn't say he wouldn't try to wear you out. Now listen, I'm not preaching tonight, so this is all free. I think I may have a ring. Do I have a ring or not? Or maybe this mic. I think it's this mic. I can hear it. Yeah, it's, you all hear that when I'm moving? Maybe it's just me. It don't matter anymore. So. I want you to know that God loves you. He's got the best for you. And... He wants to fill you so full of hope that no listen, we're in the end times, right? Yes. And you know, I, if you look around, I mean you just get assaulted everywhere you go. And about I just want to share this. I've, I've shared Romans 15, 13. I'm not going to break the scriptures out. You can look at uh, uh, Philippians 4, verse 8. It says, uh, think on these things. Where things are lovely, where things are pure, where things are just, where things have a good report. Now I want you to stop and think about something. We're talking about hope. We're talking about joy and peace. Y'all with me? Amen. That means you got to look at me if you're with me. Okay? Now, used to, to get bad, there's that squeal again. Yeah, it was doing a little go too. It's, don't just turn them, sis. So you're taking, you just took my volume down so I don't kick in. you got a major ring. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, well, the devil don't want you to hear this, so obviously, maybe this mic, I'm not sure. Hello. Hello. I was, I'm going to get it out. Okay? So, used to, I can project loud enough. Used to, to get bad news, you had to either be around somebody and they had to unload on you, or you had to pick up the newspaper and read it. Or then it come along where you could tune into the telephone, television, 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 yeah, telephone. You could pick it before the, I guess it was the next thing, telephone, party lines, everybody was telling somebody something. And then it came to the television, and you could tune in every night and somebody could give you a disappointing report. Now come on. Yep. And so do we see how it's progressed? Now information is good if it's used in the right way. I'm not knocking information. We're talking about hope. Joy and peace. And the Bible says, listen, the enemy's going to do his job from here until until till Jesus comes back. And that's to steal, kill, and destroy. Our job is to have abundant life and enjoy it so much we make everybody else want it. And that is and that means going through things that are, that you should destroy us and still having joy and peace and hope through the middle of them. Come on. Big smile. So 
this, the other day, this week, God really just, He just really showed me something. Because we're coming to these last days. See, it used to be that way. And you know, Smith Wigglesworth, awesome man of God, he learned how to be alone with God. He learned how to, how to train his thoughts. And one of the things he did, if you came into his house, you didn't bring a newspaper in there. You left it at the door. And a lot of the men of God, they didn't have TVs, they didn't have things, because they, they chose what came into their spirit. Right? Now, most everybody has Facebook. I mean, we have several viewers, I think. How many are on there now? Five, six, ten. I think it's been up to 15 a little ago. Up top. Does it still say live? Six people watching on that one and 4,000 on the back. So, and we're assaulting them with the good news. But when you turn into your Facebook page, how much of it is good news? When you go to work, how much of it is good news? See, you used to get like one drop, you used to get hit with like one ball. Just, just, just picture it. You used to get hit with like one ball ever so often that you'd have to deflect and, and build yourself up in your most holy faith. Do you realize now that the enemy's got it fine-tuned that something that, got, that can be used for the good of the gospel, you, like, like Facebook, the news, everywhere you go in these last days, you're being assault, assaulted with things that just drain the life right out of you. Just imagine like a, a, a thousand ping-pong balls coming at you. Now God is greater. We're talking about hope and joy and peace, right? But sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you know. I can tell you years ago, I decided that I didn't want TV no more. Nothing was wrong with TV. If you watch TV, I'm not preaching against TV. But I didn't want to listen to the news. I didn't need to be depressed. I could get my facts from some other place. And now today. You're overwhelmed with it. You're immersed so much in your life. You're we're connected 24-7. And what you don't realize is the enemy's trying to assault your joy 24-7. And your hope. If I ask you today, and I listen, everybody has a different opinion. But if we brought up something political today, I bet everybody has a huge opinion because they've been so immersed in it. Can I get an amen? And, you know, if and through the natural eyes, things seem pretty pretty bleak. I mean, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but I'm not voting for, for Hillary, and I really don't want to vote for Trump, but I don't have any other choice. <laughs> and none of that none of that makes me happy inside. None of that none of that brings me hope. Are you all getting something tonight? You're, you're, you're getting bombarded on a daily basis. Your work, your, your co-workers are they're down in the mouth. Your employers are down in the mouth. Your Facebook is down in the mouth. And, and the news media is down in the mouth. So that means you're going to have to do something. that David said he encouraged himself in the Lord. That means he got alone with God. He spent some time with the Lord. He built himself up in his most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on. And you're going to have to do some of the same things. But I want to tell you, God is a God of hope. He's here tonight. He wants to meet you. He was already meeting you. I mean, that's why we have midweek services. Because the enemy wants to try to wait you down all week long. Amen? And you can come here. You can kick the dust off your feet. You can get in the anointing. You can rinse yourself in some stuff. And you can say, whoo, glory. But I'm here to tell you, the closest thing to your mouth is your own two ears. And if you'll start praying in the Holy Ghost and you'll start speaking faith, it'll start changing things. But if you're not speaking, I'm going to hear to tell you that in these last days the enemy is speaking and he will overload your mind with all kinds of, all kinds of garbage that will steal your hope, it'll steal your joy, and it'll steal your peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we have to, we have to, the Bible says, guard your heart diligently because every issue of life flows out of it. And if you look around, I just really, it was like God just said, hey, I'm going to show you something cool that the enemy's doing. It ain't really cool. He said, I'm going to show you something cool, though, that's going to tune you in to the tactics of the enemy. It'll help keep a little more of your joy and peace. And I was already on to him, but literally he, he, he showed me this image that like it used to be, you know, like coming out of your TV screen, coming out of your computer screen, like one ball hitting you. is what it kind of used to be ever so often. And you'd shake that off and you'd be okay. The enemy's got it today where it looks like there's just an assault of like, 10,000 balls flying out of it that you hardly have time to even react to before you can even move on to the next thing. 
And see, that's why it's so vital to guard your heart, guard your mind, guard your spirit, and build yourself up in the most holy ghost. Because these last days, it's vital. And listen, you know, there's not every day that I wake up, you know, when I'm resisting some things, I'm not always going, oh, bless God, I'm so happy. Joy, joy. Because that would be a fake Christianity. Christianity says whenever everything's not going right, God still loves me and He's helping me and He's empowering me to do better. But it also says that he will, if I have hope, because see what happens, all that stuff that's attacking you, it's trying to convince you that the promises of God are not yes and amen. Come on. And if you will believe the promises of God, it, hope starts stirring up inside you. You start going, man, I really believe God is who He said He is. He can do what He said He can do. Praise God. It's going to be all right. I've been young. I've been old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not supposed to be preaching tonight. That's why I'm not. Some people are probably watching. Like, he didn't open his Bible. But I have gave you verses and I quoted them for him. So it's not that I did not give you any word. Amen. Amen. We could turn there if you wanted to. But I don't have a lot of time because we, we, we have a few guest speakers tonight. And I want to hear them. But I wanted to encourage you tonight. And I want to encourage you, the next time you start feeling your joy leaving you, start examining what, what you've been let... What, and listen, it seems like Facebook's part of life. It seems like all these things. You don't have to have it. But all these things, I, I don't think you're going to escape it all, but you don't have to receive it all. To me, it just really helped to know that... Uh, Hey, he's trying to assault me this way. You know, that's why most of the time I would say there's a ton of posts. I, I, I'll talk about this because I know you all have it, and we'll, we'll, we'll home to us, but take this in every area of life. I don't read them. If they're going to do whatever, I just scroll on by. You know, and someone I can listen to somebody, hear what they have to say, and, and love them without receiving anything from them. Amen? Amen? But I just want to encourage you. You may be immersed in all that, but don't let it steal your joy and hope. Amen? I feel like God's done with that. We're going to take the tithes and offerings before I forget. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. Hunter, does that mean you want to take the tithes and offerings? <laughs> all right. Somebody going to help you? Oh, you gotta wait for an adult, young man. Coming back to Bob. All right. So the Bible says, I think I said this once, but the Bible says we overcome by the. That was weak. Weak. The Bible says we overcome by the. And the. Word of our testimony. Amen. Anybody got a testimony tonight? Well, God loves me, and uh, I hear we're going to have some cooler weather for you campers this weekend, so going to be, all, it, I mean, for July 4th, you, you couldn't ask for more perfect weather, and I'm excited about going with y'all, I'm excited about God putting some joy back in your step and bouncing your step and seeing all those great things, I'm just blessed to be here. Anybody else have a testimony? Sister... Becky Gleason. <clears throat> I was on a lunch hour today and uh, I was driving, I was on a very busy street and I was making a <clears throat> left hand turn and <clears throat> just right as I was getting ready to turn, something just prompted me to kind of look at my, my side mirror and there was a lady out of what she was doing, but she was coming head on opposite traffic. I don't know if she thought she was in a turn lane or what. But she was turning down the same road I was turning. But if I would have turned and not seen her, I would have been good. Yeah. <coughs> well, we're going to start tonight with uh, oh, Mr. Isaiah. You have a testimony? All right, let's hear it.
What's in it? All right. Are you trying to tell me that God's helping you do the right thing? Yeah. yeah you had more than that you wanted to share, didn't you, from your Bible reading yesterday? We'll work on that. I think that's where you feel with that. Amen. Praise God. Well, that too much, what time do we have? 7.41. All right. 7.41. We'll, we'll give each of you ladies 10 minutes apiece. Sister Becky said, I used to love you, Pastor. I heard some secular song in my head just then. <laughs> All right. Sister Heather Hall, come on down and bring us forward. And listen, and we can have an altar time. I, I believe the Holy Ghost is here. But I want to encourage you tonight. Listen, God is here. He wants to give you hope. But sometimes you just got to show and throw up that shield of faith and let those darts bounce <coughs> off. But the problem is, I think that we've just got so used to it because it's how our society is that we don't even realize we're being bombarded with so much negative stuff. And I want to encourage you to bring that shield up and say, no, nah, you're not getting in here. I'm not receiving that. Amen. All right. Well, the title of my message that I have is called A Time to Flourish. So we'll go ahead and start in Joshua chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 6. It says, Be strong and of good courage, for unto his people shalt thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. And so being strong means that um, that first John 4, 4 is greater is he that's within you than he is in the world, being strong in, in his strength. Verse 7, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe you according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, so that thou mayest prosper whether, whithersoever thou goest. And so that's how you live that blessed life. That's how you... Um, is that there's a lot of people that want that blessed life, but that's through um, being in His Word. Let's turn to Psalms chapter 1 real quick. <clears throat> It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat or the, of the scornful. So that means that you're only receiving godly counsel, not bad counsel from the wicked. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And that means the word of God. You're, you're meditating upon it, you delight in it, it consumes you, um, and you do it habitually. Verse 3, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So, imagine going to the grocery store and you see you're buying fruit or vegetables. You want to pick the ripest one, the one that looks the best, the one that is not wrinkled or shriveled up. You don't, you don't buy those. But that's like with us. we gotta, we got to flourish. we got to um, be fruitful in the Word of God. Let's turn to Psalms 92 real quick. Verse 12 through 15. It says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And when you're planted, you bloom where you're planted, where God plants you. And so it's important, and, and God takes that seriously. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. And that means when something is flourishing, it's plump, it's healthy, and it's beautiful. And that's how God desires us to be. It was short. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Let's give Reverend Heather Hall a hand. Amen. Next up for our up-and-coming ministers is uh, the, the one and only Rebecca Gleason.
I guess if I had to take my uh, message, talk, sharing, whatever you want to call it, it's called Never Too Far Gone. And um, I want to read something to you there. Um, the last few weeks, uh, as I've been listening to radio, uh, a song just kind of kept catching my attention. And it really spoke to me. It was things that I knew. It's things that you guys know. But I think it's something that's important that, that we share with others. And uh, I, I want to read you the, the lyrics of the song. And it says, I have loved you from the start. I have seen your hurting heart. And you feel so lonely, but you keep on hiding because you feel so guilty for what you have done. And it says, there's no distance too far that I can't reach you. There's no place that's so dark that I can't find you. Anywhere that you are, if you need proof, take a look at the scars and know that I love you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter what you've done. <clears throat> you are never, never too far gone. And it says, so. Um, you have run down every road and you've lost your way back home. And you feel so dirty, you know you're unworthy. Feeling undeserving of any love. But you will never outrun my love. You are never, you are never too far gone. And that really kind of <clears throat> spoke to me. Um, you know, I know you probably asked me, why am I sharing this with the church, you know, that, that knows us and it's a church of believers. But I, I think that hits every single one of us. Um, you know, most people that, that don't know Christ, you know, I mean, we've all, you know, the Bible says that we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. And um, there are people out there that think they're too far gone, that they've, no matter what they've done, they've sinned too much, and, and you know, their lives are too bad that God can't, you know, save them or help them because they're too far gone. And, um, and they feel that they're not deserving of God's love or God's forgiveness. And it's just not possible. But Psalms 86.5 says, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plentiness and mercy unto all them that, that uh, call upon thee. And 1 John 1, nine says, If we confess with our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And... Um, you know, even as believers, sometimes we get an attitude of, and, and I have thought this, you know, I, my past and things that I've done, I'm not <coughs> worthy to, you know, do like Pastor Brian's job, or not that I'm called to do his job, but, but you know, that God can't use me in that way. You know, I'm, he saved me, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, job well done in everybody's heart, we're great. But, but no, you know, God loves us and God has a plan for us. And uh, I want to share a story real quick about um, that a co-worker told me when I first started at the court almost two years ago. And it was an older lady and um, it was right about the time that when uh, the Boston Bombers, when the brother, he was being sentenced and she was, she was talking and she was saying, you know, there are just some people that just aren't good. That's just that's just what their fate, you know, that's what their fate is. They're not good. They can't be helped. They're too far gone. And, you know, and I was correct to her. I'm like, no, nobody's too far gone. You know, if we repent, you know, God has great things in store for us. And she shared a story with me about her niece that um, had, had a, a boy and um, he was in trouble a lot when he was younger. And as he got older, he got in a lot of trouble. And she had sought counseling from her her pastor, and her pastor had told this mother, well, there's just nothing we can do, he's just a little soul. And my heart sunk, and I said, that goes against every single thing that the Word of God says. Nobody is too far gone, nobody is too lost, no matter what's been done, you know, it's, it's, it's never too late. And, um, you know, um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. 
So us as Christians, you know, not only are we to to go and, and uh, share the gospel and God's love and make, you know, help make disciples, but we also need to let them know about God's love and how deep it is and the passion that God has for each and every single one of us. No matter what our paths are, as long as as we confess with our mouth and forgive, ask for forgiveness, you're never too far gone. Um, and then I just want to leave you with uh, Romans 8, 38 through 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nothing can separate us from God's love. Amen. What a, what a, what fantastic words. Amen. Sister, the room and Rebecca doesn't know, but there's some people watching tonight. I was shocked. They've tuned in. I'm glad to see you. But they're thinking, man, she don't know Pastor Ryan. <laughs> I knew him before. I can't believe what he's doing now. Because <laughs> I was least likely, and there was a time in my life that I'm most, a whole group of people thought I was too far gone. They thought I could never amount to anything. And I'm so thankful there were some people that, let's take her to the back, please. She's right by that mic. They thought I was too far gone. They said, but there's a group of people that never gave up on me, that prayed for me, that loved me. You know, they didn't condone what I did, but they sure loved me anyway. I ask you to take her to the back, please, sir. <clears throat> well, praise God. You know what? We're going to pray here in a minute because you know this message is for one, for this message is for everybody here. I believe somebody's got something out of it. But I really want you to believe. I believe there's souls on the line that are about to come to Jesus tonight. And uh, so, you're never too far gone. You've never messed up. And listen, nothing's too hard for God. Yes. Nothing. And I want to encourage you now if you're here, if you're online or something, can somebody. Sister Rachel, can you go right up here and man that? If someone types they want to get saved and, you know, and if they're coming back there, you better turn. If if you're here tonight though, and you say, you know what, I thought I was too far gone. I want to encourage you now. And God can reach out right where you're at. He can restore you. First John 1 9 says he's faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and wash you clean from all unrighteousness. So that means you're going to repent and you're going to turn from that thing. You're not going to keep sitting there messing around with it. It also means he can set you free from it where it no longer has a hold on you. And you know, there was a time in my life I thought, well, I don't I can't be good. I've tried, and I really did. I tried to be good on my own. And I couldn't do it. But I can tell you, through the grace of God, he, he has cleaned me up. I'm sure not perfect yet, but I'm a million times better than the guy that I once was. And if that's you tonight, and you're like, you know what, I'm tired of playing both sides, I'm tired of all this stuff, I just want to go all in with Jesus. Right now, in Jesus' name, I just want you to raise your hand. If you're here and you're ready, some of you are like that. You put me on the spot. Yeah, I did. Because I love you and so does Jesus. He doesn't want you to spend another night like that. <coughs> you say, well, how do I know? Well, you know, this guilt and shame eating you alive. You see, once it's been under, put on the blood, it can't eat you the devil may try to accuse you, but it can't eat you. 
Amen. Anybody here? Last chance. All right. Thank you. I just want to encourage you tonight. You know, we have all kinds of different words here. If God be for you, who can be against you? And it may seem, sometimes it seems really hard to choose the right thing. And it may be actually a little hard to get your flesh to line up. But there's nothing that'll be better than doing the will of God. Amen. Let's let's turn all of them off. Well, well I guess. We'll, I'll take care of it. Anybody here any special prayer tonight?